Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto reincarnated on Olympian's world and become son of chaos? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Right now two boys are fighting in the valley of the end why you ask it's because one is named Sasuke Uchiha and his entire clan was murdered by his brother Itachi Uchiha so he left the village hidden in the leaves to become stronger to kill Itachi. Sasuke, Naruto 3rd PTO. You can't stop me Naruto from getting away from the village, Sasuke screamed. No I will do it or die trying Naruto yelled back, but I have two I promised Sakura, he thought. They both charged their jutsus in their both different colors with the demonic chakra tainting it. They both leapt, flew at each other, Sasuke, Naruto. When their jutsus collided you couldn't see nothing because of the glare of light from both jutsus but when it went away you can see a regular Sasuke standing over a half-dead Naruto. Goodbye Naruto, Sasuke whispered then he charged a chidori through his chest he smirked, forever. Unknown to both of them a cloak clad figure was watching the scene with sadness, Naruto I'm so sorry, for all of this, this person is chaos and also Naruto's father. I'll find a way to make it up to you I promise but first I have to take you to your other home. He waited until Sasuke was gone so he could go to Naruto. When he did he immediately went to Naruto and started to heal him, oh Naruto sorry for this but I think I know how to make it up to you, while he was saying that he was giving Naruto 5 bloodlines. Use my gift well Naruto. With that he teleported Naruto to a world with Greek goddess and gods. Naruto. Why should I? Yellow Flash, because if if don't know ramen for you. Naruto. Okay fine Yellow Flash doesn't own Naruto can I have my ramen now? Yellow Flash. Yes Naruto. Yes ramen party Yellow Flash. Read on. All I could see was a sandy beach with three animals fighting one is a beautiful horse, a proud eagle and a graceful wolf they were trying to kill each other well the wolf not very much but the eagle swooped down and clawed at the horse's snout and the horse reared up and kicked the eagle in the wings but the wolf sat there watching with what appears to be a frown. When the eagle is about to claw out the horse's wide eyes someone cried out, no, I looked too where the noise was coming from and saw a boy about my age sea green eyes and black tousled hair trying to run towards the creatures. Boom crack I woke up with a start I looked outside. And saw lightning making false daylight I looked around. And saw a blood seal on the wall I slowly walked over. To it and slit my thumb and ran it over the seal immediately nine items one of them were scrolls explaining my bloodline another was a scroll the size of me that said elemental ninjutsu, taijutsu, genjutsu another was a scroll on kenjutsu and a scroll on fuinjutsu and elemental manipulation paper a kanai and ninja tool holster with a note that said they were both endless and black blade that practically oozed death and power and lastly a note that said dear naruto i'm sorry i couldn't be there for you when you needed it i hope that you will forgive me for sealing the kiyubi inside you when you were born and i hope that you will use my gift well and son i will always be proud of you no matter what you do and what path you take but right now you might be wondering where you are you and where to go right now you're in the United States and the Greek gods are real. I want you to go to camp half blood a camp for people like you the son of gods and mortals. By the way every time you modder a new jutsu in the scroll it disappears and a new powerful jutsu takes its place. Dad, Naruto whispered tears rolling freely down his face he was heading towards the door when he realized he let his stuff in the room he quickly went back and looked through the fuinjutsu scroll for a quick sealing formula after he did that he made an individual seal for everything after he did that he set off to find camp half blood. Percy Pav I just got here a few days ago after the minotaur attack I heard some noises near the huge pine tree. Talia's pine tree. I went up there to see one blonde spiky haired boy fighting off three hellhounds with a black katana. Ah get off me you stupid mutt. He said to a hell hound currently biting him he slashed it and quickly killed the other hounds. Hey is this camp half blood? He asked Percy. Yeah this is camp half blood, Percy said to the blonde. Good what's your name? Naruto questioned. Percy, Percy Jackson yours, Percy asked. Naruto Uzumaki I think I'm going to pass out now. After he finished saying that he passed out and Percy grew a big sweat drop before shaking his head bringing him over to the infirmary. Time skip two days later Naruto Pav day after capture the flag. 
While I was unconscious I had a nightmare that Raman tried to eat and when I came to I sat straight up really fast scaring the black haired blue eyed beauty watching over me. Jeez don't scare me like that. She said scowling at Naruto who looked back sheepishly. Sorry was startled someone was here but hi my name's Naruto what's yours, he asked. My name's Selena Beauregard, she said with a small unnoticeable blush on her face. Nice to meet you Selena, he said kindly not noticing the growing blush on her face. Chiron said I should show you around camp after you wake up so get up and see camp, she said with an ordering voice but also said it with a joking manner. Fine but tell me whose daughter are you, An Naruto knows about the gods. I'm a daughter of Aphrodite and also the counselor of the Aphrodite cabin, she stated proudly. Aphrodite cabin? I asked confused. I'll explain it once I show you around the camp so get up, she said to Naruto. They walked out of the infirmary wing to the middle of twelve cabins. What are all these cabins for? Naruto questioned. They are meant to signify the Olympians Zeus, Poseidon, Hera, Apollo, Dionysus, Artemis, Demeter, Hephaestus, Hades, Hermes, Ares, and Aphrodite. She said the last name with a hint of pride. Hey Selena who's the newbie? Someone yelled from across the field we both looked and I saw a pretty girl with flowing brown hair nice b-cup s and a nice figure and pretty green eyes next to her was a girl with shoulder length red hair with brown eyes borderline c-cup with a nice figure both wearing orange shirts that said camp half blood with a cameo jacket covering them. This is Naruto I showed him around camp and I'm just about done, Selena said to her friends. Good because it's time for the newbie to have his initiation, the redhead said with a grin. Let's do it, the brunette agreed. They were about to grab him for their initiation when they both felt cold steel against their neck. Sorry but I don't think I like being initiated, he whispered in their ears and they shivered against them oddly feeling safe in arms. I'll let you both go if you tell me your names, he said in their ears. M my name's Clarice daughter of Ares, Clarice said with a slight stutter. And my name is Alex daughter of Ares, the brunette said to Naruto. He smiled kindly to them, nice to meet you Alex, Clarice I think I'm going to sleep against that tree, he said pointing to Talia's tree and ran over to it leaving two blushing girls and a girl with a jealous look on her face. Naruto Pav. Huh now I see why Shikamaru like watching the clouds, Naruto said while watching the clouds slowly nodding off to sleep. All it's time to take that nap now, he yawned and was out like a light. Naruto in, dream. Where am I? Naruto said as he was looking at an abandoned version of camp still in his spot at the tree. What's that sound? Naruto asked to himself as heard something that sounded like crying. I guess I better go see where that crying is coming from, Naruto said going against his better judgment. Following the sound of crying he quickly found himself at a big cabin made out of marble with two holographic lightning bolts at either side of the door so in other words it was the Zeus cabin. Well looks like it's coming from here. He mumbled as he took a shaky step forward to open the door and was greeted by the sight of a girl with black hair and a leather jacket crying curled up on one of the beds crying facing away from him. He didn't like to see anyone cry so he went up to her and hugged her while she cried into his chest. Why, Sniffle, are you, Sob, helping me, she asked Naruto while looking at him with tear-stained eyes. I hate seeing people around me cry so I decide to help you so what's wrong, he asked the still mysterious girl. The girl blushed a light shade of pink before saying, well my name is Talia and I just hate being alone in this tree and wants to go out to see my three friends Luke, Annabeth, and Grover you see I'm a daughter of Zeus, eh? And I don't want to explain this most of you probably know this already, and I've been stuck in this tree ever since and my spirit protects the camp from monsters. Naruto looked at her sadly before saying, don't worry I'll get you out of here even if it kills me I promise. He spoke to her with confidence while she looked at him surprised but then with bright red cheeks. Naruto felt himself waking up and said goodbye to Talia while he completely. Goodbye Naruto. Talia whispered to herself Naruto outside tree. How long was I in there, Naruto asked himself when he saw it was almost noon. Well might as well go see my new cabin mates, he said while walking down to camp. Where's my cabin? Naruto asked himself in frustration as he looked around for his cabin. I might as well ask where my cabin is, Naruto said in his mind. So he went up to a girl with a orange circa H. 
B shirt with blonde hair and gray eyes, A. And guess who? And said, Excuse me, but do you know where my cabin is? Naruto asked the girl. When she looked at him, she gained a small blush on her face and berated herself in her mind, Who is Guy and why am I feeling this way? I like Luke, right? A. Are you determined or undetermined? She asked him with a slight stutter. Well, I don't know who my parent is if that's what you're asking, he replied. Then you go to that cabin, she said, pointing to a cabin with peeling paint. Thank you, Annabeth. My name's Annabeth, she answered his unknown question. Well, thank you, Annabeth. I hope we see each other again, he said to her. Yeah, goodbye, she said to the blonde, then ran off with light pink cheeks. Well, time to meet my cabin mates, he mumbled to himself. Naruto Pav. I looked at the cabin looming over me deciding whether to open the door normally or make an appearance deciding with just opening the door I walked into a cabin with a dunk of kids with upturned noses and mischief in their eyes one guy older than the others walked up to me. Hey my name's Luke are you new to camp? The now known Luke asked. Yeah I'm new and I don't know my parent and a girl named Annabeth told me to come here, Naruto replied. Well welcome to the Hermes cabin, Luke said. You can have that spot on the floor right there. Luke said while pointing next to a shoebox and bedroll, A. And guess who? Thanks he said putting a small paper with the word seal written in kanji on the floor where Luke pointed at. So, what do you do for fun around here? Naruto asked. Oh you'll see Luke said with a mischievous glint in his eye. Lunchtime skip. Okay everybody line up to go to lunch. Luke yelled to all the Hermes campers lined up for lunch and Naruto was next to Percy the boy who brought him to the hospital after he passed out. They talked and quickly became friends even more so when Naruto told Percy his skills as a shinobi and said that he wished he could make shadow clones to do his homework. They all quickly went to the Hermes table and sat down with Naruto next to Percy whose butt was hanging off the seat. I I have all of your attention, Chiron yelled over all the talking campers. They all became quiet waiting for Chiron to say what he needs to say. Today we have a new camper joining us so let's all give him a warm welcome to, imaginary drum roll, Naruto Uzumaki, then he pointed to Naruto who was sitting across the pavilion. When he saw he wasn't there he was confused. Where is Naruto Uzumaki? Chiron asked. Up here, a voice said above then they looked above them and there was Naruto walking up a tree several gasps were heard as they Naruto walking along a tree but Mr. D's eyes narrowed, oh so you're from that world are you? Confused looks were sent to him as they didn't know what name meant by Naruto being from another world. What do you mean another world? A random Apollo camper called out saying the unsaid question on everyone's minds. Well Naruto here is from a world where people called shinobi use a energy called chakra to do amazing feats. Now Naruto will you demonstrate for us, Mr. D called out. Okay Mr. D, going through some hand seals too fast for anyone to see then stopped on a ram seal and called out the jutsu. Fire style. Phoenix flower jutsu, then he shot out small fireballs at the sky. Everyone gasped at what they saw and wanted to know how the boy in front of them can do anything like that. Well a little bit flashy but okay, Mr. D said after watching him finish the jutsu. Other sweat dropped as they saw Mr. D shrug it off as if it was an everyday occurrence. But in other news tonight is the weekly capture the flag and it's going to be Ares cabin against the Hermes cabin, he called out. A roar of approval went over the tables especially the Ares table. Then all the food disappeared from the tables and now there were bronze weapons in their place. I I will be the referee and medic and remember you may bound but not gag prisoner and any maiming or killing during the game will lose their dessert privilege now let the games begin, he roared out the last part and people rushed to get armor with vigor. Then the Ares cabin rushed in with a blood red flag with boar's head painted on it. So we have to capture the Ares cabin's flag, he asked Annabeth next to him while she was sporting a light blush on her face. He's talking to me say something, she thought. Exactly this called capture the flag isn't it, she replied. Dang it why did I say that now I bet he thinks I am a jerk, Annabeth berated herself in her mind. Okay just making sure, Naruto replied with a shrug. Why isn't he mad at me, Annabeth thought in confusion. Anyway here comes Percy, Naruto said and moved away from Annabeth much to her disappointment. He listened into their conversation for a bit but soon went to hide and make sure Percy didn't get in any trouble as usual. Time skip Percy vs Clarice Percy Pav. 
This is so boring, Percy thought while swinging his sword around randomly. I wish something interesting would happen, Percy though when he heard a voice that made him instantly regrets that thought. Hey Prissy you ready for round two and there aren't any toilets to save you this time, Clarice yelled at him with three tall overly muscular boys behind her who he guessed were her brothers because the evil looks in their eyes and the permanent scowls on their faces. One of the boys rushed towards Percy in an attempt to get a lucky hit on him but Percy dodged Barley and just got a light cut on his arm he winced and while he was focused oh his cut one of Clarice's goons snuck up behind him and whacked his sword on his helmet making him disoriented and giving them another opening to cut him. Hey no maiming, Percy said dizzily still disoriented by the hit to his helmet. Oops looks like I lose my desert privileges, one of the boys said sarcastically. They all laughed and pushed him into the nearby creek and continued to laugh at him but unknown to them a pair of angry purple ringed eyes looked at the scene in disgust. Naruto Pav. Shit I shouldn't got him to distracted, Naruto whispered to himself as he watched the scene below him with anger. Well I guess I should show them what I can do, Naruto said annoyed even though he didn't have to show them to much power but unconsciously activated one of his bloodlines. Come why does everything seem so clear, Naruto thought and then realized that he subconsciously added chakra to his eyes. This must be my bloodline, Naruto thought with excitement but quickly brought his attention back to Percy and saw just in time for him to get pushed into the creek. Damn I was too distracted oh well might as well help, Naruto thought and then jumped from the tree he was currently perched on and jumped in front of the offenders. They looked at him in surprise they didn't anybody was watching them but despite their surprise they quickly brought their swords up ready to defend themselves from Naruto, but he just stood there and slowly took out his sword it was a beautifully crafted sword that was mostly pith black except when it came to the blade and then turned to a beautiful shade of silver and there was a gem in the handle that looked like to eye with a black slit and a red iris. The three boys quickly got over their surprise and attempted to land on Naruto, attempted, the three boys slowly realized that they were far to outmatched but that didn't stop them from still trying to attack. Fight scene this is my first one so don't judge, come these are supposed to be the sons of the god of war? Thought Naruto as he parried an attack from one of the boys but they didn't stop and continued to attack him but getting tired of this game very quickly Naruto rushed up to them and quickly banged his sword into boy 1's temple effectually knocking him out then he turned to boy 2 and unleashed killer intent on him the poor boy didn't stand a chance against his ki then he turned to the last boy but he was so scared of Naruto's display of power that he pissed his pants fainted. Then he turned to his last opponent Clarice and he was so caught up in his fight that he didn't notice that Percy had already knocked Clarice out with her broken spear next to her. Well I'm glad that's oh, Percy stopped mid-sentence gaping at his eyes. What happened to your eyes? Percy questioned. That's another story for another day, Naruto told Percy. Well that was interesting. A voice said behind them they turned Percy startled because he didn't think anyone was watching them but Naruto saw her with his newly activated bloodline. At first Percy didn't see anything then the air in front of them shimmered and then they saw Annabeth with her same calculating gaze and a Yankees baseball cap clutched in her hand. Where were you? Percy yelled at her angry that she had seen him get beat up and didn't even to attempt to help. I was here just in case you needed help I was about to help but you didn't need it, Annabeth said coolly to him but soon gasped. Annabeth what's wrong? Percy asked confused as of why she was acting like this. Percy step out of the water, Naruto said next to him. Percy did that and as soon as he did he regretted it he felt as if he ran a marathon he almost collapsed but Annabeth and Naruto caught him. Oh sticks, Annabeth cursed, I thought Zeus broke the pact again but if you really are his son. They soon heard a gasp all around them they were so caught up in their conversation that they didn't notice a crowd around them and all of them were staring above his head. All of a sudden people started bowing while Percy was confused soon all of the campers were bowing except Naruto who was standing next to him. All hail Percy son of Poseidon, yelled Chiron. But yet another gasp was heard and over Naruto's head was a glowing black symbol with a vortex on it and a comma in the middle. Then shakily Chiron announced again. All hail Naruto son of chaos creator of the universe, Chiron stated grimly. All hail Naruto son of chaos, Chiron said grimly. All people who were surprised when they found out that Percy was the son of Poseidon were absolutely blown away as they found out that Naruto Uzumki was the son of the creator of the universe and probably will be the most powerful demigod ever born and because of that the surprise was so great that some even fainted. 
You both shall be moved to the correct cabins as soon as possible, Percy to the Poseidon cabin and Naruto to the. Chiron was cut off as a low rumbling was heard and then the remaining campers who hadn't fainted ran to the pavilion just in time to see the rest of a gigantic cabin coming out of the ground, the cabin itself was very beautiful it was mostly black with red swirls that looked like the cosmos all in all the cabin was beautiful. And Naruto to new chaos cabin. Chiron continued with surprise but also hidden happiness in his voice because he secretly didn't know exactly where to put Naruto because originally they didn't even a cabin dedicated to chaos but he had a feeling that the Sertian camp counselors of Athena, Ares, Aphrodite, and Demeter might be more than willing to let him sleep over at their cabin. It has been over two days since the claiming and nobody was talking to them Naruto was used to it because of all of the abuse from the villagers but Percy wasn't and for him to be deprived from all the campers attention he felt like he was going insane from not being acknowledged by anyone. But that all changed when Percy and Naruto got their dream. I think all you bros know what their dreams were all about so I am going to skip to when Grover knocks on Percy's door. I sat there for a while wondering what the dream meant and who was Ares chasing. I would have kept wondering but I heard a knock on the door and then Grover's voice telling me that I needed to go to the big house, I told Grover through the door that I would go as soon as I got changed and I heard him say yes and said he would meet me at the big house. When I got my shoes I immediately ran to the big house wondering what Chiron thought was so important that he needed to send Grover to tell him to go meet him. But when he got there he got there he saw that Naruto, Grover, and Chiron were there waiting for him with a grim expression. What's wrong? Percy asked in confusion. Percy Zeus has accused you of stealing his lightning bolt the very same that hurled Kronos off his throne, Chiron said. What? Percy yelled. I have never even been to Olympus now he's accusing me of stealing his bolt in a place I've never even been on is Zeus crazy? Percy yelled. Chiron and Grover looked nervously at the sky as if expecting lightning coming down and strike them. Uh Percy we don't use the C word to describe the king of gods, Grover said. Paranoid perhaps but it is understandable because Poseidon has once lost Zeus's trust I believe that was question 12 on your quiz, Chiron looked at him expect at least like he expected him to actually remember but thankfully Naruto came to the rescue. Percy Poseidon and the other gods trapped Zeus under a golden net until he promised to be a better ruler and Zeus hasn't trusted Poseidon ever since, Naruto answered. So that's why he has been so mad and the two people fighting in my dreams Esser Zeus and Poseidon, Percy mused. Grover nearly spit up the soda can he was currently eating and looked at Chiron excitedly. See Chiron it has to be them who gets a quest it has to be. Grover said with excitement in his voice. Hush Seder we still have to let them consult the oracle, Chiron childed. The oracle, Percy asked with confusion. You'll see, Naruto said talking for the first time since Percy had got here. Then Naruto led Percy to the attic where it was full of trophies and Percy swear he saw his stuffed dragon's head among the stuff and would have spent more time admiring it if he didn't have to catch up with Naruto who was breezing past the stuff as it wasn't even there but instead made his way to something propped up on a three-legged stool all of that would have been normal except it was a mummy and it turned to them. But if that wasn't all it spoke in a raspy voice and said. I am the oracle of Delphi defeater of the great Ephosus speak your question. It spoke in a raspy voice. Percy himself was afraid but Naruto came forward and asked the question. Where do we find the bolt? Naruto asked. Then a lime green mist started slithering out of her mouth and wrap it around them. You four shall go west and find the god that has turned. Find what was lost and see it safely returned. Be betrayed by one who calls you friend. And fail to save what matters most in the end, and while the son of chaos is sure to prevail. His fight with a god he will come close to fail. Then the mist slithered back into its mouth and went back to its position as if it never moved. They went down to Chiron and was greeted with their expectant faces. Well the oracle said, Naruto Pa, I was getting ready for my quest and was packing a scroll full of infinite kanai and shuriken in my backpack and also a scroll full of extra clothes for him Percy and Annabeth a n sorry if I didn't describe his clothing before he is wearing a black shirt with a light grey thin jacket and was wearing steel toed shoes with black tightish pants but then he remembered how the four quest companions came to be. Flashback. Well the oracle said that we would find the god that turned in the west and he see that I will fail to save what matters most, Percy said. But Chiron looked troubled. Percy are you sure it sounds incomplete? No that's it, Percy replied. 
Chiron still looked troubled but let it go. Okay but you still have to choose your quest mates and we have a couple candidates right here. Then the air next to Chiron shimmered and there was Annabeth with her beautiful curly blonde hair in a ponytail and her hat in her hand. Okay. Percy sighed. I will take Grover, Annabeth, and Naruto, Percy said. But Chiron looked him and smiled. Okay Percy I trust your decision now go get ready for your quest. They all nodded and went off to prepare for the seemingly long journey. Flashback end. Now here I am in front of the camp van about to take us to the bus terminal to Hades. I got here early so I had to wait a while so I just went in my mindscape so I just closed my eyes went into a lotus flower position and concentrated. Mindscape. I suddenly found myself in the same damp dark sewer where I usually went to talk to Kyubi so I just made my way towards his cage. Hello kid it's been a while since we've talked, Kyubi said as he saw his jailer. Yeah it's been a while Kyubi. Why have you come here kid I know you need something, Kyubi grunted out. Well Kyubi I need your permission to put a seal on you so I can use your power without being in a life threatening situation, Naruto said. Why would you need my permission why don't you just force the seal to siphon my power? It's because the seal works better when I have your permission and it would be a lot more convenient. Hmm. Very well kid I will allow you to put the seal on me on one condition. What condition, I want to have access to your senses so I can see what you see and hear what you hear because believe it or not even demon foxes get bored from time to time. Fine I will allow you to have access to my senses. Good kid and you better get out now because your teammates are coming by. And with that Kayubi pushed Naruto out of his mind. Out of mindscape. When I got pushed out of my mindscape he saw Grover and Percy coming towards the car. Hey guys where's Annabeth? Naruto asked. Then they saw Annabeth running towards them. Okay since we're all here let's go to the bus terminal, Naruto said. Then they heard a voice in the distance yell wait, they all turned and saw Luke running towards with what looks like a shoebox tucked under his arm. Before you go I want Percy to have these shoes they're magical, Luke said. Then he said Mia and the shoes started flying out of the box and flying in circles around Percy's head. Wow thanks Luke I know these will come in handy during the quest. Percy said with a smile. Good I hope they do and I hope your quest goes well. Luke said and hugged Annabeth and was surprised that she wasn't blushing when he even went near her and that secretly frustrated him to no end. When they said their final goodbyes they climbed onto the bus and went on their way to the bus terminal where they would start their quest. When they finally reached the bus terminal they immediately climbed on a bus going to Los Angeles and went to the back of the bus and so far there were no monsters in sight or smell but then three elderly looking ladies climbed on the bus, now that might have been normal but then Percy recognized them as elderly versions of Miss Dodds he quickly warned the others about that. Annabeth cursed under her breath and quickly grabbed her baseball cap and shoved it in Percy's hand. Go and hide we can distract them while you run away. What? I can't leave you to fight those guys, Percy protested. Percy, Naruto said seriously, we can handle our sellers and they are after you so hiding is the better answer for you. Percy still looked unsure but he grabbed Annabeth's cap and pulled it overhead and shimmered out of existence and when the fur kindly ones noticed Percy's absence they went ballistic and attacked them and in the middle of fighting the bus tipped over and disorienting the furies so they escaped. Naruto Pav we were running away from the explosion, in a hurry to put as much distance between them and the bus explosion as possible and when we thought we got far enough from the explosion as possible they stopped and take a rest. A perfectly good bag of aluminum can gone forever, Grover sobbed. He he gone forever huh? I said pulling out our quest packs that I quickly grabbed from the explosion. Grover quickly grabbed his pack and took out his bag of cans and hugged them to his chest. They all looked relieved to have their packs saved but didn't over exaggerate and took their packs and nodded as a sign of thank you. Annabeth sighed. Well we might as well get some rest the sun is going down. Then they all noticed how late it was becoming and quickly got ready to sleep, but took shifts just in case. And with that Naruto fell into a dreamless sleep, though the same can't be said the same about Percy. I didn't know what was happening one second I was sleeping on the floor dreaming about ramen and suddenly I was pulled from my dream and here I am floating in a seemingly endless space and my stomach wasn't agreeing to it. But suddenly there was a flash of light so I averted my eyes so the ball of light didn't permanently blind me. When I looked back I thought I was looking into a mirror because standing there was almost perfect copy of me but the copy 
looked to be in his early thirties, had an angular face, was wearing a black cloak and his eyes were completely black with no white part of the eye, he looked at me and smiled. Hello son, I am so glad to finally get to actually talk to you after all of these years. My brain completely shut down. Can you blame me? I haven't even met my father then on a quest he suddenly appears in my dream saying he is happy to finally meet me so yeah I am very very confused. Yo your and my dad. Yes Naruto I am your dad and I know that you have a lot to ask and I will try and answer any question you have on a later date but now we have to talk. He had a serious edge in his voice so Naruto listened immediately with a little disappointment because he couldn't even talk to his own father but steeled himself because now was not the time to whine now was the time for action. Okay what do we need to talk about? First off I am going to going to give you a special sword that's abilities will be revealed to you as you use it, and the scroll that I gave you on different kinds of jutsus can update itself every month and I did have that scroll for what, a hundred years so. I felt my mouth go dry with anticipation because with all of those jutsus at my disposal who knows how powerful I could get. I was snapped out of my musings when chaos snapped his fingers in front of my face. When I looked back at him he had an amused smile on his face, if you don't want me to tell you more about your powers I could just gee, don't go, I covered my mouth and berated myself at my sudden outburst, I looked at his face wondering if I angered the creator of the gods, but when I looked I only saw him chuckling to himself with an amused look on his face. So now can I talk, he asked, I nodded. Okay I will also give you a bracklet that will let you communicate telepathically with all of your friends and that girl stuck in the tree. How do you know about Talia? I asked, but he just smirked, I'm your father I know these things. I sweat dropped at that but nodded at him to continue. But I also come with a warning. What is it? I asked, do you really want to risk your life on this quest? He asked, but I just nodded confidently at him. Dad. I'm ready to lay my life on the line for any of my comrades because those who break the rules are trash. But those who abandon their comrades are lower than trash, Dad finished. Then he smiled warmly at me, I have to go now, make me proud son. I felt myself leave the place with only the last picture of my father smiling warmly still fresh in my mind. Dream end time skip we were walking down a road, so in hindsight that probably wasn't a good idea but right now we weren't thinking with the thing between our ears. Right now we were thinking with our stomach so we would have walked into a monster infested hole to get a decent meal. After about 20 minutes we finally came across a building I looked at the sign and saw it said Auntie M's Garden Emporium. Why hello dearies are you lost? I turned around and saw a woman, I couldn't see any of her features because she wore a middle eastern like turban, black sunglasses and a long dress, so I could only see her hands which were well manicured. I was about to respond but Percy and his, genius, ideas tried to make up a story. Sorry, but we were trying to find our circus leader. He told us to meet him at the gas station but we got lost, is that food I smell? Oh you poor dearies, come inside I have plenty of food and a soda fountain. That sounds nice, Percy said and I mentally face palmed because going into a random stranger's house when they offer food is one of the most important rules of knowing what is a pedophile. Other than them offering you to go in their car but anyway we went inside of the shop. When we got in the shop the smell of food wafted into my nose, my stomach rumbled and at that time I just realized how hungry that I really was. Okay dearies stay here while I get the food, she said in a nice tone. We sat down at a nearby table to wait for our food. I looked around and noticed that there were statues, a lot of statues things like garden gnomes, flamingos and creepiest of all statues of people that normally would have been normal for a garden emporium but the faces were wrong it looks like they were startled or even afraid, that is strange, I felt my hand twitch towards my new weapon given to me by chaos, I could change the shape of the weapon but for now I chose it to be in the shape of a lighter. It's okay calm down she's just a sweet old lady that offered us food it's gonna be okay, Naruto thought to himself. Okay dearies here's the food and if you want more don't be afraid to ask. Thank you, they all said all together. Then we grabbed the assortment of different foods like pizza, fries, burgers, and soda. All of us were dining on the food but Grover wasn't eating any of it, he was eyeing the wax lining of the paper fry holder. So where are your parents? She asked. We're orphans, I said. Oh you poor children, she crooned, it's okay you get used to it. Thank you for the food but we have to go soon the ringmaster is waiting for us, Annabeth said. Okay but before you go can I take a picture of you all? Why? 
You see ever since the new super highway opened people don't come by as much on this road so I must cherish every customer I get. Annabeth seemed to hesitate before saying okay. She seemed delighted, okay can you go by the bench the boys on the side and the girl in the middle? We got in the requested positions while Grover commented that the stone satyr looked like his uncle. Okay now stay in that position, she said while noticeably taking off her turban. Aren't you going to get your camera? asked Percy. Yes I should, shouldn't I? she said while still taking off her, her turban. It is my uncle Ferdinand, Grover yelled out, so he took that as a signal to scatter and not a second too late because Auntie M ripped off her turban revealing her to have snakes for hair. All of the snakes were hissing angrily while she tried to look for us. I knew I should have trusted my instincts Naruto berated himself as he wrapped a blindfold around his eyes. Where are you half-bloods you will make a fine addition to my collection, but the daughter of Athena, will be broken at my feet. That made Naruto's blood boil, she was a comrade and he will not allow his comrades to die, so he charged while lighting his lighter along the way, the lighter turned into a long silver blade similar to Zabaza's blade but it was at least just a yard long and the hilt had a specially designed defense if anyone else used it besides him metal spikes would come out and pierce the hand, then it would electrocute the person. He continued to rush towards Medusa only relying on sound, using echolocation. Medusa heard him and turned around not expecting to see a blindfolded demigod with a huge ass sword, she didn't get much time to react because Naruto sliced at her head but missed by a centimeter. It continued like that for a while, both of them trading blows, then Grover in the shoes Percy gave him came in with a tree branch blindly and smacked Medusa upright the head, and then flew away. Medusa was disoriented just long enough for Naruto to slice off her head, she died with a screech, her body disappeared but her severed head layer on the floor. Guys it's okay she's dead, Naruto yelled out. They slowly came out of their hiding spots, with caution, but calmed down when they saw Medusa's head on the floor. Annabeth ran up and hugged him, after that she gave a playful punch in the chest. Nice to see that you're still alive fishcake. Naruto grew a tick mark above his eyebrow. It's M-A-E-L-S-T-O-R-M damn it. Whatever. So what are we gonna do with this? Grover asked while tapping the severed head with his foot. I know what to do with it, Percy replied. Then he proceeded to raid the cash machine that was filled with mortal money as well as drachmas, but he found a box just the right size for the head. Then he wrote a very nice note for Zeus and then mailed it off to Olympus courtesy of Hermes delivery business. We walked out of the shop and continued down the road to a nearby train station but had to stop because of all of the exhaustion that they were feeling so they decided to get some shut eye and just hope that tomorrow will be a better day. Naruto Pav. I didn't really like mornings, I just want to point that out. But to make it worse sleeping on the cold uncomfortable floor of the woods was worse, but it did have one upside. Annabeth was sleeping on my chest. I don't know why I was feeling this way, it was happening ever since our fight with Medusa, I just thought at first that I was being overprotective but. I think I might like her, but I don't any of the other girls like Talia, Clarice, Katie, and Alexandra, but what do I do? Naruto pushed that thought out of his head for now and gently woke Annabeth up. Hey Annabeth, Naruto said, it's time to wake up. She mumbled out something incoherent and opened her grey eyes in a sleepy manner, as soon as she saw me and noticed our current position she let out out a eep, and jumped off me with a big blush on her face. W we should wake up the others, she said with a slight stutter in an uncharacteristic Annabeth-like way. I nodded at her while keeping my own blush off and I looked over and saw Grover a while off with a pink poodle in his hands. Grover why do you have a poodle? I asked with a raised eyebrow. This poodle is our way west and her name is Galita, you see she ran away from a local rich family that is offering $300 for her return and when I told her about our quest she offered to go back to that rich family even if she doesn't want to, but she will if it means that we succeed, he explained. But at that exact time Percy woke up and also asked why Grover had a pink poodle in his hands so he gave the same explanation. And with all of them up to speed they went to the rich family and gave them Galita, which they were most happy about and unaware about the poodle's ire to be back with them. During the train ride Naruto and Annabeth kept on sneaking glances at each other and blushed heavily when one caught the other, and Percy being as clueless as he has looked back and forth between them with Grover copying him. Lucky Annabeth distracted them by pointing out the saint. Louis Arch, 
which suspiciously looked like a big shopping bag handle sticking out of the ground to Naruto, and with Annabeth's constant pleading they decided to take a tour of the arch while Annabeth was constantly blurting out facts about the arch. When they were on the actual tower overlooking the city Naruto couldn't help but be impressed at how well regular mortals in this world can make such beautiful works of art. Then the tower guard told them that the arch was closing and we should go, so with the elevator full and a reluctant Grover and Annabeth going in the elevator they went back down to the earth, leaving Naruto and Percy with a fat lady and her creepy dog barking at them. Are you sure you want to do this now Sonny? The fat lady asked. The dog barked at her and then she sighed. Okay if you want to do it now. Then they started changing. The chihuahua grow so big that its back scraped the ceiling then its tail turned into a snake. Then the fat lady ripped off her sleeves, showing scaly arms and when she cackled they could see her forked tongue flicking back and forth. Everything would have been okay but Percy had to make a remark about her name belonging to a anteater, which pissed her off and called for her son to attack him and Percy. And she'd have kept on telling them on how the gods were going to abandon them and shit like that. That happened to piss Percy off so he tried to fight her son only to get bit in the leg by the snake and get tossed off the hole that her son made when he attempted to set Naruto and Percy on fire. Naruto watched as Percy fell form the arch and he was mad, no, mad didn't even begin to describe how he was feeling, he felt like murdering these two with his bare hands. He felt his lighter get hot in his pocket, he took it out and lit it, then it extended into his sword, except this time it was different it had no guard or a hilt it was big and it had a cloth on the end of it, and Naruto instantly knew its name because it popped in his head as soon as he saw it. Zanjetsu. I looked at the new sword in my hand with awe, it was as big as me but it was pretty light. I looked back at Enchadia and her son looking at the new sword in my hands with fear but I just pushed it out of my mind and focused on the task at hand while gripping the large in my hand and rushing them with my new sword pointing in front of me. As soon as I got in reach I stabbed Enchadia in the chest and violently ripping it out and slicing her neck. Her son looked at me with a combination of fear and anger but before it could have possibly reacted I quickly flashed through the necessary hand signs. Darkness release. Pit of the endless void. Naruto called out and looked surprised as if he didn't even know what would happen if he called out his technique then a black hole appeared under the frightened monster and sucked it in while it gave a final roar of defiance and finally got sucked into the disappearing black hole. Naruto blinked owlishly but reverted his sword back into a lighter and shushined out of the arch and into an ally near it so he could look for Annabeth and Grover and hopefully Percy. He looked around the crowds of people and saw a news reporter reporting on the explosion at the arch and said it could have a possible terrorist attack whatever that means. He walked around for a little while till he saw Grover and Annabeth looking around in worry, but I didn't see Percy around them. I walked up to them with my trademark grin on my face but Annabeth apparently didn't it as funny as I did contrary to the punch she gave me on the shoulder. But I could tell that she was glad to see me because the relief I saw in her grey eyes. Have you guys seen Percy yet? I asked with concern. But she nodded. Yeah I did see him coming out of the river so I think he will find us sooner or later and, she was cut off as they saw Percy running towards them with relief on his face. The first thing that Grover did was give him a big bear hug and asking him where he went but Percy didn't answer that instead he told us that we needed to get away from the arch as soon as possible, and by some sheer luck we managed to get to the Amtrak station without being caught. We boarded the train before it pulled out of Denver only leaving the sound of police sirens behind us. The next afternoon, June 14th it's only 7 days until the summer solstice and we haven't eaten in a while, it's been so long since I've had a bowl of ramen with the delicious noodles, the perfect broth, and the fish cakes, just the thought of that makes my mouth water with hunger. We decided that we should call Chiron so we wandered further until we found a do-it-yourself car wash and used the spray pump to make a makeshift rainbow to call Chiron. We had Grover pump it while we were making the call. Oh Iris goddess of rainbows please accept my offering. Annabeth called out when she flipped the coin in the makeshift rainbow. When it touched the rainbow a wispy image appeared in the mist, it was Luke. He was dressed in standard leather armor with his sword in hand, he looked as if he had just finished training prior to him dripping, in sweat. When he saw us he gave a grin and waved, and made Annabeth blush out of habit. Hey guys how's the quest going? He asked. It's going fi. Naruto was cut off as blaring music was heard, it was so loud that they couldn't even hear Luke. Annoyed both Annabeth and Naruto went to shut off the music leaving Grover and Percy to talk to Luke. 
When Naruto and Annabeth went to the source of the problem they saw a man with his hair greased back listening to heavy metal music he and Naruto argued a but then Naruto punched the mons car leaving a fist sized dent which also scared the man which lead him to driving away in fright, trying to get as much space between him and Naruto as possible. When they got back they saw the fading image of Luke. They asked what Luke said and Percy repeated all the problems that they heard about camp. They decided to go get something to eat so they decided to go eat at a diner that they saw earlier, and where they currently are now waiting for their orders to come. Naruto was wearing a new pair of black jeans that he had stored in his storage seals along with a grey camp a hold blood shirt and with a pair of grey shoes which finished his look. The others still had suggested that they should get something to eat so they decided to go here. While waiting for their food they suddenly saw a huge motorcycle park in front of the building. He was a very wheel built man he had a pair of black sunglasses, he had a shave head and his face was covered in scars when he walked in the building Naruto had the sudden urge to kill everything in sight and he could tell that everyone else felt the same but in a less horrific manner. When he saw them he instantly sat next to them, Naruto looked up at him in a bored manner and said with a bored voice. Hello Lord Ares. So you've been the one everybody on Olympus has been talking about, Ares said while giving him a nasty grin. You know I should kill you for all the trouble you have been giving us underscore, but you won't because we are on an important quest to retrieve your father's lightning rod, Naruto said without care. They suddenly heard a rumble of thunder off in the distance, signifying Zeus's displeasure at a powerful weapon being allied a lightning rod. You better be careful, Ares said with a growl. You're so lucky he has let you on this quest, much less live. Being the son a deity older than the primordials themselves, has that effect on people. Why are you here? Percy said rudely, but when Annabeth sent him a look of warning that instantly made him shut up. Sorry for my friend Lord Ares, Annabeth said as she tried to apologize to the war god, but he just let out a cruel laugh. It's okay, a little attitude never hurt anyone, Ares shrugged, and beside, I need all of you alive if I want you to do this small mission for me, and if somehow you manage to finish it I will give you some information. What kind of information? Percy asked. Well if you accept this mission, maybe I'll tell you, Ares said with a knowing smirk. Well tell us the details on the quest and we might just take it, Naruto said while looking at the war god. I need you to get my shield, Ares grubbed out. I was on a date with my girl and we had to leave because of some unfortunate circumstances. What, something scared you off, Percy said with a smirk. Idiot, Naruto thought, he's gonna get himself and his teammates killed. You better watch what you say, before I turn you into a prairie dog and run you over with my Harley. Percy was about to retort before Annabeth suddenly covered his mouth and gave him that patented, Athena, glare before she turned to Ares. Lord Ares we are honored to be offered your quest. You have to go to an abandoned water park, that's where I left my shield and that's where your next stop is. Ares said his fiery eyes burned with excitement before standing up and in getting out and walking to his Harley. But before he left he looked at Naruto with a sick grin and an extra fiery glint in his eyes as if he knew something that he didn't, that sit well with Naruto so he decided that he would keep a close eye on the war god and watched as he rode away. They all stared at the uneaten food that Ares had, bought. come on the quicker we finish this quest. The quicker we can find Zeus's thunderbolt, Percy said going towards the door while the others followed. It was silent as they walked down the road leading to the water park. Well we're here. Percy said while looking at the sign that was missing a few letters. Yeah but how are we supposed to get to the other side it's locked. Annabeth said while jangling the chain that kept them from their goal. Mia! Grover yelled out while running towards the fence, and when he was just about to hit the fence he flew up and did a somersault halfway through and when he landed he dusted himself off as if he planned the whole thing. Well come on! Grover said on the other side of the fence. But how do we get across? Percy asked which made Naruto grin mischievously. Allow me, Naruto said while crouching so he was at eye level with the lock. He reached into his weapon pouch tag and pulled out a piece of paper with a kind of ancient writing on it. He stuck it to the lock and made a weird sign with his hand and as soon as he did from the bottom up it started to catch fire, and as soon as it did they saw Naruto run past them with an excited look on his face but as he passed Percy and Annabeth he grabbed both of them and ran past one of the abandoned buildings. When they were about to chew him out for his weird actions they heard a huge explosion shake the ground they saw that not only was the fence open, the front of the fence wasn't even there anymore. 
They looked at his crazed grin when he saw his work. What was that? Annabeth asked, now intrigued on how he did that. But he just gave her a mischievous smirk while not telling her anything and just walking past her and towards the gigantic empty pool with a couple of seats in the middle surrounded by mirrors. Well, there's the shield, Naruto said while his eyes scanning the area for anything that can be a danger. How can you tell? Percy asked. Well, first of all, Naruto began. We're in the middle of the water park and this is the biggest ride here, and since Ares said that he was on a date, this would be the most likely place he would be since it is the tunnel of love, Naruto summarized while Annabeth nodded at the explanation. Well, Annabeth, are you coming or not? Naruto asked, completely missing how Annabeth would interpret the question and just as expected her cheeks flushed bright red. Are you crazy? What if someone sees us? Annabeth said looking down. Who else would see you guys besides me and Grover? Percy asked putting in his two cents. I guess I'll go by myself, Naruto said with a sigh, but as he went down towards the pool, Annabeth followed Naruto grumbling how dumb boys were. Well there's the shield, Naruto said while looking at the shield and without thinking he grabbed it not thinking about Annabeth's sudden cry of alarm. He turned immediately at Annabeth's cry and saw that the Cupid statues all shot their arrows at each creating a net that was almost magically making a gigantic, spiderweb, around them. He saw that Grover was trying his best to pull apart the net but whenever he grabbed it it started running up his arms so he was forced to let go, and from the looks of it Percy was also trying the same thing as Grover. Annabeth, are you okay? Naruto asked, worried about his quest mate. Eeeee, was the first answer he got, thinking that she was in trouble he brought out his lighter to strike the monster, he stopped halfway through seeing what she was scared of. Spiders. Why do you hate me Kami? Naruto said to himself before flipping open his lighter to activate his new sword, preparing for a battle, against eight-legged insects. Damn it, Naruto thought as he batted away another spider away from Annabeth's frozen form while he tried to come up with a way to get out of their situation. Naruto quickly looked around for anything to use for their advantage, he immediately saw the rusted water pipe but he didn't see any kind of activation switch or lever near it. Crap how the in the hell am I going to do this, there seems to be no lever that I can use. But who needs a water level when we have a son of Poseidon on our side, Naruto thought with a grin. Hey wet head, Naruto yelled out to Percy, who was quite annoyed by the nickname but decided that now was not a time for arguing. What, do you think that you can use your powers to drown these spiders? Well, maybe but what about you and Annabeth, Percy said after a moment's contemplation. Don, t worry I have a plan. Percy focused on the rusted water pipe and tried to find the pull in his gut, after he found it he focused on it by making a pulling motion with his hand. As if the water was listening to him it spilled out of the pipe quickly filling up the pool with water. But luckily Naruto had pulled himself and Annabeth before the water started filling up the pool. Woohoo! Naruto yelled out as they went through the ride, they went through rather quickly and they exited out the back and they saw a big pile up of the boats from the ride. Well looks like we'll have to jump, Naruto said, but we'll do it on my mark. No, we'll do it on my mark, Annabeth cut in having gotten over the shock of seeing those spiders. After giving her an, okay, after a moment's hesitation she yelled out jump not even a second after the boat had crashed into the pile. But fortunately on unfortunately they had gotten maximum air time. Seeing this Naruto grabbed Annabeth and carried her bridal style as they fell and when they hit the ground, Naruto made sure to use air chakra so that he could slow the fall so he did not break any bones. Now broadcasting to Olympus the camera announced, Oh my god I'm on T. V. Hi mom, Naruto yelled out towards the camera, but shortly after he said that he threw a kanai at it, destroying the camera. The other sweat dropped at his randomness but he took it in stride as he took the shield and hoisted it onto his back, much like Captain America would do before all sense of joking was gone and he looked at the others with seriousness in his eyes. Now that that's over, why don't we pay Ares a visit? Time skip diner when they finally returned to the diner. They saw Ares waiting in the front of the diner. Leaning against his motorcycle with a sick grin on his face as he looked at the approaching kids. His grin didn't last long when Naruto shoved his shield in Ares' arms, now not caring, not like he ever did, if he was a god. Hey brat. Ares growled out. Show some respect, you know that I could turn you, yeah, yeah I know you could turn me into a bug and step on me, but then Zeus won't get his lightning rod. And you know who he would blame? 
The person who delayed us on our quest, Naruto said as he looked Ares dead in the eyes. After a short stare off Ares' face just broke in a grin and pointed behind him, at a truck that they hadn't seen before. There's your ride, Ares said simply before getting on his bike, and after one more hate-filled glare with his fiery eyes he peeled out of the road. Damn, I hate that guy, Naruto mumbled after he left, but stopped as Annabeth sent him a warning look. Naruto that is a god that you are talking about, you know that he could have killed you at any time? Um guys, Grover said timidly, getting in between them. I think that we should get on our tide quick, because I think that those two are the drivers. He said while pointing at two guys standing up from the booth in the restaurant. They quickly jumped in the back of the truck after that. As soon as they jumped in the truck they were hit with a multitude of feelings, mostly anger and pity. Because in the back of the truck there were animals in a sorry state. But the most angry out of all of them was Naruto and Grover. Naruto let out a small growl at seeing the animals. How can they do this to these animals? Percy said as he stared at the zebra with a balloon attached to its horn. We have to let these animals go as soon as we make it to our destination, Naruto said with a firm voice, leaving no room to argue. They soon got to work at helping the animals. First they switched the foods to the appropriate animals and refilled their water bowls. Soon Naruto noticed a cage pushed in a corner and walked towards it. There was two furry animals curling against each other. They were two little wolf cubs, a boy and a girl. The boy had black fur and emerald green eyes. His teeth were a silvery white, which looked like it can snap your arm off with a well-aimed chomp. The girl had white fur and defiant blue eyes that screamed out for attention. Naruto felt his heart go out for these animals for living like this and vowed to make the animal caretakers pay for what they made these poor animals go through. He let them out of the cages and pulled them into his arms. They immediately snuggled up to him, liking the feeling of warmness. Naruto fell asleep not long after that, dreaming where this quest would take them. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.